think the real heart of um, our center is uh, the desire of every single person who works here to provide the very best treatment and atmosphere and environment for every patient who walks through the door. I am a social worker here at the Cancer Center. If a patient needs transportation, if they need information regarding medical bills, applying for disability, um, if they are having a problem at home with uh, paying bills, then I try to find resources for them to help them out on those things. I also do counseling uh, with patients, with family members, with caregivers who are having a hard time uh, dealing with their diagnosis of cancer. I oversee um, a staff of uh, one medical technologist and two phlebotomists and we perform um, basic lab tests for the physicians, the medical oncologists as well as the radiation oncologists. And then we also process all the specimens that we send out. So we actually draw the blood, run some of the tests, and send out some of the others. When a patient first comes in after they've had their consultation with the doctor and have decided that they're going to have radiation treatments, one of the first things we need to do is do what we call a simulation. The simulation is where they lay on the CT simulator table in the position that they're going to be treated in. We do a full scan of the area that needs to be treated and at the very end we will make markings on the patient um, with a felt tip marker. Then we will tattoo the center of that area so that we can line up to that mark every day for their treatments. So the tattoos are permanent and we line up to those tattoos every day so that we are treating just the precise area that we need to treat. Um, if it needs to be done on their face or on their head and neck, we have these masks. They're called aquaplast masks and they start out as a flat piece of plastic and we put them in warm water and it gets very flexible and we mold that right to the patient and it attaches to the table. So they, have, they will stay in that position and then all the marks are on the mask. It helps twofold because the marks are on the, on the mask and not on the patient and then it also helps with keeping their head in the same position. If you did not have the mask, a patient would be able to move their head even if they tried to hold it very still. So the mask helps for two reasons. I had to have tattooing. Um, um, they put black dots um, in various spots so that they could tell um, you know, if I were someplace else, uh, here they have all my records, but say I was in an accident or had to have treatment when I was in Florida or someplace um, other than that, then I, they could show that I, I had uh, radiation in those areas and if, uh, and they can tell, you know, just from having those tattoos, you can tell that you, what you've had and where you've had it and what they might need to concentrate on some other time, so, yep. That wasn't fun. I didn't appreciate the tattooing. Really, these activity-based support groups have become resoundingly popular. And um, we, about 250 people participate a month in those activities. And these are all supported by uh, donations and contributions to the Cancer Center. The, those activities are all free to the patients and a caregiver of theirs. And they're all supported by outside contributions. The exercise classes I've been taking uh, advantage of, not only the Pilates, the Pilates and the ball exercise, but I've been doing the yoga, and I've been doing the uh, Tai Chi, which is excellent. Uh, it really has helped me with my breathing. Uh, we also have uh, psychological counseling, because cancer is a very hard uh, disease to, to manage and uh, we provide free counseling for the patients or uh, a family member who's having a difficult time uh, dealing with the issues. Um, the other, um, we have two specialty clinics as well. One is, um, is breast and the other is um, our brain clinic. And um, in those clinics, um, we have all of the specialists, that is a radiation oncologist, a medical oncologist, a social worker, nutritionist, um, and um, we provide a comprehensive approach to, to cancer care. Um, and there are from time to time some very special needs that come up with patients um, and we deal with those on a one-to-one -one basis. Patients that use the support groups that are in other areas, you know, some of the outlying areas, get a world of knowledge from other patients that have already been through 
treatment similar to theirs or even a different diagnosis. They're not alone. That's the biggest thing they get out of them. When we brought in this piece of equipment, the Varian um, 21EX three years ago, I had hoped to have the ceiling backlighted with a very nice calming scene, be it a, um, an ocean, mountains, uh, springtime scene, or fall colors. And uh, we ran out of money um, to have that done in the ceiling. And I was in my library at home uh, doing some work, and we live on a cul-de-sac, and outside were all these children playing uh, in the cul-de-sac and there was just this joyful noise of children playing and it just dawned on me why don't I have children paint the ceiling tiles um, so we contacted St. Monica's and they were the first to uh, paint the ceiling tiles um, in the new vault for the new linear accelerator and the patients just loved it and so then we went on and we had other schools paint the tiles uh, in the other uh, rooms where patients have to lie on their back and, and be treated uh, so that they again have something to entertain their eyes and take their mind off of uh, the treatment. Uh, the plan to do that by a former patient who said every time she came in here she just felt like she wanted it more colorful uh, and to have some things to be able to look at when she was waiting for appointments or in having treatments. So once they've done that, I, the patients seem to really, really enjoy it. I've, I've also heard a lot of feedback on that, that it's really nice to, to take a look at them. The patients really enjoy, uh, they know it's children that have done it for the most part, but uh, they say that each day they notice something else on, on the tile. So even though they may be here for 30 days and lying on, in the same position for 30 days, they see something different every single day. Uh, this is the, the experience that the patients uh, feel. And I think that um, art is one more um, aspect of, of healing, uh, to enjoy something as, as innocent as a child's painting on a ceiling is, is just a joy. I think now, uh, they didn't have them up in the chemo room before, but those beautiful murals that they have up there now are absolutely gorgeous. You know, to be able to sit and fall asleep in front of those would be really nice, so. They were done by a local artist named Conrad that had some pictures that, and he planned. It, it was just kind of to do like an artistic stimulation for patients. And as he went along here on a scaffolding stuff, people would tell them to do, oh, you should put this in. So we have a, um, a golf course hole with a flag, and just a little ways down is a field that has cows in it. And there's all sorts of different little additive things that don't necessarily go together, but are hidden. A couple of the greeters have little dogs that uh, the patients seem to like, the pet therapy aspect of it. And uh, we have a rather unique situation right now with a um, blind Labrador retriever who has a really special gift in um, making the patient smile when, when he walks through the waiting rooms and greets them. And um, we were very fortunate to have a beautiful grand piano uh, donated to the, to the cancer center. And we have volunteers who play the piano, which is just absolutely glorious for um, the patients to be welcomed with such beautiful music. Again, you know, another aspect of treating the whole person with the art, it's the visual, uh, with the piano, it's the, it's the hearing and with the massage, it's the touch. Uh, we have a beautiful aquarium uh, on the first floor. After we finish some renovations, we'll have one on the second floor as well. Um, and so all these things, just again, to create an environment of healing for the patient. I think the puzzles were a big distraction. Uh, you know, when you come in, especially with radiation, when you come in every single day, uh, sometimes you have to wait. Sometimes the machines are down or they're slow or backed up or whatever, and you sit there and it gives you a distraction. It gives you something to do. The puzzles were fantastic. The, the coffee and the cookie cart that wanders around keeps everybody fed. Massage chose to work at the Cancer Center because it was very close to um, my family and my community. Um, it's a 10 minute drive to work. I've worked at a lot of other cancer centers in the past. They are all very comparable. Um, everybody is working at 
creating the best care for their patients and for their employees, and the Cancer Center does a very good job at doing both of these things. Well, when I was a patient here and saw the good things that they did, I always thought, you know, I just have to give something back to the center because of everything that they did for me. Because I'm on a protocol study, one of the nurses said to me, well, why don't you send in your resume, drop off your resume? We, she knew they were hiring in some way. And they called me and said, come on down for an interview. And so I've been here for two and a half years working in the protocol area, which is one of the areas where I was actually involved as a patient. My degrees are in business and presumably I could uh, run a cardiology practice or a surgery practice. Um, there is no other field I'd want to be in but oncology.